am back today to do a book thoughts video on The Vanishing Stare by Maureen Johnson. I did receive a finished copy of this book from Harper Teen slash Epic Reads for free to review and give my honest opinion. So I've decided to start calling like my book reviews, book discussions, book thoughts. I'm just kind of getting tired of the term review and I feel like these types of videos, they're not always like very structured reviews. And I just always feel like I'm just more sharing my thoughts with you and chatting with you about books. So I just wanted to kind of change the title. Let me know if you like that or not. I know it may not make that much of a difference, but it's just something I wanted to do in the new year to kind of change it up and make my videos a little more fresh, I guess. I don't know. So today we're talking about The Vanishing Stare. As I said, this is the sequel to Truly Devious. I'm pretty much just going to talk about spoilers since it is a sequel and this is a mystery series, so it's hard to talk about it without spoilers. So I'm just going to go ahead and call this like a spoiler discussion. So if you have not read Truly Devious and The Vanishing Stare, please leave the video. I don't want you to be spoiled. Read them, come back, and we can talk about them. I do have a non-spoiler review of Truly Devious, so I'll link that below if you want to see what that book is all about. But for my general thoughts, I did enjoy The Vanishing Stare. I gave it like four out of five stars. I enjoyed aspects of it more than the first book, but then there are other parts of it that I liked less than the first book, so I didn't adore it and love it as much as I did the first one, but I thought it was a decent follow-up. Let's go ahead and jump into my thoughts. So I felt like The Vanishing Stare was a little more fast-paced than Truly Devious. It sucked me into the story quicker, and it was because, you know, we were already introduced to the characters and the setting, and we knew more was what was going on, so we didn't need as much backstory as we did in Truly Devious. So I felt felt like um, The Vanishing Stare was a really quick read and I was flying through it because I was really compelled by the story and Truly Devious left off on such a big cliffhanger that I was like, oh my gosh, I have to figure out what's going on. I really liked that we got some explanations and we got some answers so we finally figured out who Truly Devious is and what happened that night with Ellingham's wife. We still don't know about Alice, which is really frustrating, but I'll talk about that in a little bit. But I did like that we at least got some answers. I also really liked the representation in this book. Our main character, CV has anxiety, so I really like that representation in this story, and I can relate to it on some levels. I think that makes her character definitely have more depth and be more realistic. Stevie's friend, V, or Vi, I'm not sure how to say it, is non-binary, and I thought that was a really cool addition to the story because I feel like I haven't read any young adult books that have non-binary representation. Although Vi, you know, was a side character and I mean, wasn't really there all the time. I thought it was just cool to see that in a book, even if it was a small part of the story. So I'm going to start getting into more of like spoilers now. I thought the whole deal with Edward King and David was a little weird. Like that whole storyline. I just don't know how I feel about David. I don't really like him. In the first book, I kind of was like, okay, I can see, you know, David. He seems mysterious, but him and Stevie have this weird connection. But then we found out about his father and everything. And I just, I don't know, I don't like the way that he treats Stevie. I feel like he's kind of manipulative. I mean, his father is manipulative for sure. I don't know. Like, I understand that David doesn't like his father. And I thought the insight that we got into his past was really fascinating on how his father basically kept him and his mom a secret. And he told uh, Stevie that in the tunnels, you know, right before they kissed. And I just thought that part was really strange. Like, y'all barely talked, you know, you kind of keep bickering back and forth. And then all of a sudden, y'all start making out after David like spills his guts to you about his past and his relationship with his father. I don't know. I just thought it was timed weird and it kind of just felt out of place and just didn't seem right. So I'm not a fan of David. I'm not really rooting for Stevie and David. We had that weird thing in the end where he wanted to film people beating him up. He needs help for sure and I can appreciate I guess his character arc because he is in a really sucky situation. His father is just not a great guy so I see all that but I just don't think Stevie's the person to help him. I don't know. I just don't see her. I just don't see it working out to where she like fixes him you know. And Stevie's character in this book I really liked her in the first one. I liked how she was very resourceful and just very determined to figure everything out and I loved how she really enjoyed true crime. I just felt like we lost some of her character in this book and maybe it was because 
Edward King was basically telling her what to do and she was back at the school because Edward King let her. She had to complete this mission for him, which was to make sure David was okay and to keep him in line. And I felt like Edward King just kind of kept telling her what to do. She just didn't have as much like self-direction, I guess. I don't know, I felt like she was being kind of controlled and manipulated. I mean, towards the end, she did figure out the mystery and she went on her own and did that. So her crime solving skills were still in play in this story, but I just felt like her character wasn't as lively as the first book. But this is, you know, a really dark story and there's a lot of bad things going on in this book. So I guess I can understand. So we have these new characters of the professor and Hunter. You know, the professor also was like giving Stevie tasks and making Making her go do things so I feel like Stevie just kind of had a lot of people telling her what to do yeah they were kind of weird I don't know they were strange I don't know Hunter's deal like are Stevie and Hunter flirting what really is going on with Hunter and the professor because I'm not sure if I believe his story it's just all very strange and then the ending of the book whenever the professor died and she just said the boy is there like what boy she's talking about Hunter like what's going on so this book definitely still left off on cliffhangers and unanswered questions. So of course we are going to get a third book, which I'm okay with that. I do really enjoy this world. I do. I enjoy this setting and I enjoy the mystery and crime part of it. So um, I'll definitely read the next book, but I was just like, what? What is going on? And then there was the piece um, about Alice that was like left unanswered. Marsh found out about Alice and Ellingham's secret with her so we don't really know like where she is or what's going on did she die was she kidnapped I don't know so that's still a big question mark so I thought the way it ended how we found out about Truly Devious that it was um actually the two kids that wrote the letter and it had nothing to do with the kidnapping and that Marsh was the one that kidnapped the wife and all of that kind of disappointing that there wasn't this you know crazy like monster in the shadows kind of thing going on that it was just marsh but i liked how it was developed with the sherlock holmes and dotty and all that how it was in the wire or whatever like i thought that was a really cool thing and how the riddle played into it with the stairs all that mumbo jumbo i thought it was really cool how it all tied into the story and um i just felt really bad for dotty and figuring out you know really what happened to her like it was just really sad, but I'm just really glad we know now. But like I said, I will definitely read the next book and I am interested to get more answers, see how it all wraps up. I'm not totally sure is the next book the last book. Maybe the next book will be a little happier than this book. I just felt like this book had a lot of doom and gloom. So those are all of my thoughts on The Vanishing Stare. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you next time.